Hello everyone and welcome to Rainbow Six Extraction. In today's video we're going to review all the enemies you face in the game, tips how you face them, what are the weaknesses, weak points, how you can approach mod situation, everything apart from the Proteans, which I do believe they deserve their own video, which I do plan to release shortly. Before we start, in case you enjoy the content of the channel and you don't want to miss any upcoming videos I do release throughout the week, feel free to subscribe. So without any further delay, let's jump right into the first entry, which is in my opinion the most dangerous enemies that are surprisingly number two option until we get to the hardest enemy, which are the nests. This may come as a surprise because usually this should be the number one priority until we get to the last entry that you only face usually during the higher difficulties. Now, why the nests are so dangerous? As you may know, nests can produce enemies. When you face them firstly, they are dormant nests, meaning even if you shoot them, attack them, they basically do nothing until you can kill them. One melee attack, a few shots from your gun, or the laser can actually kill them, the one you unlock in the 25 milestone level. Yes, the laser can kill the nest in prolonged exposure, so you can just save ammo if you want to kill them, although one melee attack up close is the most efficient way to kill them without alerting the enemies. So why the nests are an important high target? As you may have most of you noticed, they spawn enemies when they're not dormant. If an enemy sees you and screams, in a certain vicinity it will activate close-up nests. They will start spawning enemies without limbing every 10-20 seconds and if you get unlucky and for example an enemy alerts 3 nests, every 20 seconds you will have to face 3 new enemies. In lower difficulties it's their easy enemies but in higher difficulties you can face even the hardest enemies in the game. That's why the nests are a high priority and we need to kill them as soon as possible and I do like to dispose of them even before I approach the normal enemies. There are two types of nests and one mutation that involves all nests. The regular nests that are the red ones you usually face throughout the whole levels and they are barren nests that are green and part of an objective. You have to kill all of them before you collect a sample. So there is a major difference about the aberrant and the normal nests, because they act as a hive mind. That being said, in case you destroy and not damage, because if you shoot one or twice before destroying the nests, it won't alert the others. Once the first nest is down, all the others will start spawning enemies, and you do face quite a lot of aberrant nests specifically 5 per operator, so if you're solo there are 5, if there are 2 operators it will be 10 and for a full group it will be 15. As you can understand it's very crucial to locate each and every nest before you start approaching, otherwise especially for a full group, if 10 enemies start spawning at the same time, it's very easy to get overwhelmed quite fast. After the first one dies you have approximately 2-5 to five seconds before they start spawning enemies. That being said, for solo things can be tricky, as you can see in the background, the nest can be placed quite a far one to the other, so in case you don't have a C4 and remote detonate, let's say the furthest one of the nest, I do concede sometimes leave one of the nests, the one the furthest or the one that's alone for the last, in the hopes that it might not fast enough, the worst case scenario I will face only one enemy spawn instead of two or three and that's what I recommend to do. Just focus on the nests that are close by and try to kill everything as soon as possible. Use non-silenced weapons because they deal more damage and you will be able to finish the nest much faster. The one mutation both variants can have is Armored Kappas, making them basically tankier because they're not immortal. You can shoot them, but with a silenced weapon it can take multiple clips instead of a couple of shots to destroy them. However, there are other ways to destroy them apart from wasting your ammo, because with a non-silenced weapon, yes, you can waste half a clip. It's doable, they're not indestructible, but you will waste ammo and time, so you can either one-shot them in melee, or there are other two alternatives I found. One is to throw an explosive. A frag grenade or a C4 instantly destroys the protected nests. The second way is the laser. 
And yes, the laser kills them much faster than you can expect. This is actually my favorite way to destroy Kappa's nests that are far away, but enemies lurk nearby. Because yeah, it takes some time because the laser deals a little damage. I have tested uh, to a lot of enemies and especially to the nests. So it takes approximately 5 to 10 seconds to finish them off without wasting ammo. And as you can see the background, for example, if a tormentor or another dangerous enemy lurks nearby, you can stay in the middle, let's say, range to dispose of the protected nest from range safely. Let's move on to the, let's say, real enemy, quote unquote. Number one, I do believe the sludges are a little underestimated. When you face them alone, usually you will find them on the ceiling. They do make a quite annoying screeching sound you will hear if you pay close attention. You have to be very careful, they can drop in your head and damage you. However, the biggest threat is that you cannot see them very well in case you're not uh, fully aware of your surroundings and you face multiple enemies. And the third and final, let's say, annoying thing is that each time you shoot them, they multiply. So if they're in the ground and you shoot them once, they will multiply to three smaller sludges. They're very annoying, they deal decent damage for their size and they almost blind you and they can just kill you very fast especially combined with other enemies but you can deal with them quite easy just here for the screeching noise that you hear on the ceiling and use an unsilenced weapon on the ceiling if you can because it can one shot them before they drop to the ground and before to multiply other sludges other than that be careful because there is a mutation that enemies have a chance to spawn these little annoying things but be very careful and pay close attention in case you kill an enemy and spawn the sludge take your distance and kill them once you know they're there they're not a threat the real threat is that sometimes you will not see them coming and you will start getting damage without knowing what hits you let's move on to the first humanoid enemy of the game which are the grunts basically the foot soldiers of the archaeans Grey, faceless humanoids with blades instead of hands. They have access only to melee attacks, so if they spot you, they will scream and charge at you. However, they're very squishy and very easy to deal with. Their head is their weak point. One shot to the head, even with silent pistols, can instantly destroy them. However, they're also very squishy in, let's say, melee range. Two melee attacks without taking them down, because takedown can kill all but two, I think, enemies, except for the Proteans, yeah, three enemies, and two normal shots with a knife can kill them, that's how squishy they are. However, don't underestimate them in large numbers, because if they do manage to get close to you, they will deal quite enough damage. Now, the laser can also kill them, if, because I have tested this just a curiosity, however, they will get alerted in case you can just damage them with a laser. It's not worth it, it's just something you can do, but I don't uh, recommend. I usually deal with them, especially if they are two or three at a time in higher difficulties, behind obstacles, behind walls you can see them using your LED light, and they're very easy to deal this way because when you kill one and the other two will start looking around, you will give you plenty of time before they start gnawing through the wall to kill all of them without alerting any other Archeans. Moving on to the next enemy, which are the Spikers, basically the very close cousins to the Grants, they are identical with one major and noticeable difference, they actually have spikes. So the exact same weaknesses as the Grant apply here. Their head is their weak spot, a couple of night shots they can kill them, and a couple of body shots can kill them because they're very squishy. However, they have much better strategy compared to the Grants, and they're much more intelligent compared to them, probably more evolved, let's say, form compared to the Grant, because after they spot you and they scream, Instead of charging, they will just start throwing the spikes they have in their bodies and they will also cover their weak spot, the head, so you can no longer destroy them with their head. You have two choices. One, you can wait until the spikes run out because after 5-6 shots, they will have to regenerate their spikes for some reason leave their weak spot exposed and you can kill them then. Or you can go for two body shots because they are very squishy and you can just kill them like that. You cannot one-shot them, you can two or three-shot them, especially with a non silence weapon. Yes, the laser can kill them once again, however, it's not worth it because their spikes are actually very dangerous, they're very fast, they can latch a lot from a long range, and especially if you face multiple enemies, 
by multiple angles, you can get overwhelmed quite fast, so I do recommend to dispose of them as fast as you can with body shots in worst case scenario in case you get spotted, otherwise do the same as I do with Grant, behind the wall and behind cover, they're very easy to dispose of with just one headshot. For the next entry we have very different kind of enemies, the breachers and the bloaters, they're basically those that walk in four and have green or red cells on their back which actually explode, that's why I call them green and red exploders just to recognize them a little easier. So the major difference is they both explode but the bloaters, the green ones, leave a toxic cloud around them when they explode so for 10 15 seconds after they die, don't go get close to the toxic cloud because you will take damage and you will lose accuracy. The obvious weak spot are the big cells on their back. One shot with silenced pistol or one look with your laser can actually trigger the explosion. Yes, the laser can actually trigger the explosion and I do like it because it's a silent option in case you don't have a silenced weapon, let's say, and trigger the explosion from the back. Now. The exploders are a double-edged sword because they have a disadvantage, of course they can explode in your face or they can explode near other enemies because they're damaged, they're not tied to you, it's damaged to everywhere, the environment, the nests, other enemies, assets and yourself. So first things first, in case the exploder comes near you because their purpose is to charge you, and explode just next to you to deal a lot of damage. There is one way to deal with this, one melee attack actually, will push them away and make them explode just near you without actually taking damage. So be aware of your surroundings because they will come near you, they will screech and you have a couple of seconds before you be able to do one melee attack and push them away. The second way, you may need to kill them without triggering an explosion because sometimes you need to track nests and you need them alive or they will be near assets that you need to escort and you don't want them to take damage, just damage them in their feet and hands and their belly and you will be able to kill them without triggering the explosion. That's also a nice way to set up for future, let's say, mine slash bombs. If you kill them, their corpse will remain there and be ready for example to trigger an explosion so you can for example kill them without triggering the explosion lure other enemies nearby point your laser or one shot them in the capas and you can trigger the explosion then so you can make a setup when you face high health enemies later that you see, will see the tormentors or the smashers or the elite variants of certain enemies our next entry are the sours and actually is the only one enemy you can know that you will face before actually seeing them. They live in the ground, the red things you see and if you destroy them you will destroy a mine. This mine will explode and blind you in case you go in close proximity. However, it also destroys the blinding spores so you can use it in your benefit and you can avoid the blindness if you have your back in it. But let's talk about the sours themselves. Although they move quite similar to the breachers and the bloaters, they are nothing alike. Their head is not a weak spot, don't shoot the head. It's actually the most armored place and you do next no damage if you shoot the head. You have two options, go for body shots when they are in longer range because you do a little damage there or wait when they try to scream from distance because that's when they will expose their weak spot and that's your window those 2 to 3 seconds to destroy them. Their weak spot is in their belly and if you shoot it once you will instantly destroy them. Personally, I prefer option number 3, rush them, have the laser active because it can one shot the mines in case they spawn others close by, you can melee them in case they try to scream and you can move behind them, one melee will stun them and the next will finish them off with your knife because they will try to plant them mines or something like that and you won't need to use any gadgets so you just free kill them with your knife. Next up are the Lurkers, very easy to recognize, they're mini Demogorgon creatures that have a flower shape like around their head because the red head as you can see there that's their weak spot, one shot there with your even silence weapon can kill them, however in case they see you they will close their head and protect their weak spot so be careful and they're not very dangerous as themselves as they're not very strong, they will just charge you and when they charge you they will expose their weak spot so they makes easy targets. What makes them dangerous is that can apply cloak to the 
random Archeans there, as you can see in the background. They just roam around and apply cloak to the Archeans in the, in the level. So even if you don't have the mutation for cloaked Archeans, in case you face lurkers, they can cloak the other enemies and make things a little more complicated. There aren't many tips because it's pretty straightforward how to deal with them. Shoot their exposed weak spot as soon as you can, even behind cover or when they charge you, as you can use the knife if they come close to you to push them back, however it deals next to no damage. If you face them, you cannot stun lock them and kill them unlike the sours, you will need to use gadget and take them down, which I don't really recommend, it's just better to shoot the exposed area because one shot will instantly destroy them. Next up are the Rooters, very easy to recognize compared to the Sours. Not only they're taller and bigger, but they have blades instead of humanoid-like hands and feet, and they're very deadly in close and long-range damage. As their name suggests, they have an attack that roots you in place, which is the range attack, so thankfully it's quite easy to avoid as long as you're aware of their whereabouts and you know the attack. You will see the background how they do it, what's the animation, you have to dodge it, move left or right, especially when you face multiple enemies, because routers and more enemies, it's just a nightmare scenario and a very easy wipe in case you're not be careful and avoid that attack. They have a very weird weak spot which is located in the back of their head, as you can see the background here. You can only one shot them with a weapon when you shoot them there, as you can understand, only with a surprise attack or when you are with multiple, let's say, operators, it's easy to shoot them in the back because when you solo and you face them face to face, their weak spot is not exposed, so it's very hard to deal with them. However, you can go over body shots as their head is seem to be much armored compared to the rest of the body, so you can kill them in this type of different situations. I do recommend, in case you are a good shot and you can kill them using the long range, their weak spot in the back of your head, use that. Second, in my favorite recommendation, go in close range and take them down because even if they turn and see you in the last minute, you still have approximately half to one second to take them down so you don't have to waste, for example, the resources because yes, you can use a stun grenade, a paralysis grenade or even a C4 to one-shot them. However, if you go for higher difficulties, you will face much more dangerous enemies than the three next entries, which I do prefer to save my gadgets for them and in case I have the opportunity to take out the routers without using any of my gadgets, I will do so. So up to this point, all the enemies are the bottom of the food chain. Yes, the routers can be challenging in a group, however, all the enemies are very squishy compared to the next three entries we are going to see because these are the, let's say, elites, the top of the food chain, the high priority targets, the ones you should focus because they cannot be one shot unless you can take them down and they need a lot of shots with an unsilenced weapon to be killed. However, there are a couple of ways to kill them easier, because yeah, takedown is the most overpowered way to kill the enemies, apart from the last entry and the Proteans. First up are the Tormentors. Very easy to recognize compared to, I don't want to say cousins because they may get offended. They are much taller compared to the Grunts and the Spikers. They have very pointy feet, and they will always own sprawl as they walk, no matter the mutation. They have a lot of hit points, you cannot one-shot them, although their head is their weak point, no weapon, as far as I know, can one-shot them. If alerted, they are very dangerous. If you kill an enemy nearby, they can just start teleporting left and right, but if they see you, they will not remain in the same place, so they have projectiles, and they have a very, very straightforward strategy. Shoot some projectiles, become invulnerable for a couple of seconds, take better positioning away from you, and start shooting again. There are two kinds of projectiles. The fast one, that if they hit you, you get some damage, but it's not a very big deal if you get hit by one or two of those. And the slow one, that it is a very big deal. If you get hit and you don't have temporary health boost, you can get one shotted. One versus one, Tormentors, even while alerted, it's not a very big challenge once you know how to deal with them. Trafing left and right can easily just dodge all the projectiles in your favor. You can 
crowds and dodge the projectile, but I don't recommend it because honestly, it's just easier to move left and right and dodge the projectiles. However, tormentors are extremely dangerous well faced in a group. That's why I do recommend to destroy everything and take the tormentors then or take the other approach and silent kill the tormentors before they get active. In case you fail to do so, there is one thing you can do when you face a tormentor. Be very aggressive. If you shoot them, they will not just throw too many projectiles at you and they will prefer to just hide in the ground and try to take better positioning. However, if you shoot them in the head, you will deal a lot of damage, especially with unsilenced weapons, and you will be able to kill them. Or if you face them in a group, just throw a paralysis grenade or a stun grenade. Stun grenades are a little harder because they have a two or three seconds before they explode and it's a little hard to get them. Or use the C4 because it's very easy to hit them with it and it destroys them with just one charge. Finally, once you have unlocked the laser, it's much easier to go for takedowns because they leave this sprawl behind and slow you down and if you try to destroy this prod with a weapon or melee attacks, they can just turn around and see you and you have failed to use the takedown. However, once you have unlocked the laser, you can use it to clear your floor, go near them and take them down because even if they turn around while you're crouching, you have half or one second to take them down without using gadgets and just make the best of it. Next up, the most intimidating looking enemies. However, they have very easy things to exploit, that is the Smashers. They are the only two enemies that can destroy your surveillance drone, so be careful. If you go in front of them and they will step on it, they will destroy it and you will need to wait 30 seconds. So if you just want to keep tracking around the enemies, don't get your surveillance drone near them. Otherwise, you will have to wait for the cooldown. They are the only enemies that it's very hard to take down without gadgets, that's why I recommend you to use the gadgets. If you move close by behind them while crouching and they turn around, you cannot take them down because as you can see in front of them, they are covered in armor and yes, you can deal damage to them, but the damage is minimal and you will need to waste two or three full LMG clips in order to kill them. Their weak spot is located in the back, as you can see the exposed back, and you will have to either shoot them there, which in solo is very hard, or you have to get into position behind them and take them down there. To do that, you have two options, use gadgets or bait one of their attacks. As you can see in the background, if you go to medium to long range and you keep shooting them once or twice, that will make them mad and charge you. Be careful, this charge can go through breakable objects, can go through most areas unless they're unbreakable and they can stun you and you can take a lot of damage. However, if you're a little fast, dodge it and move left or right, they will strike to involve and become stunned for a couple of seconds. That will give you the perfect opportunity to move next to them and take them down without using any gadgets. But most of the times you won't have the luxury to do so because if you alert a smasher and it's near nests and other enemies, you will have to take them down and the only way to do so is use a stun or paralysis grenade to deal the one shot behind them. And that's why we save the gadget for these guys and the tormentors in our next entry because without this it's a nightmare to deal with the smashers and other enemies. So you immediately know things are very very bad when your surveillance drone destroys itself without any visible, let's say, animations, when it gets close by to the next entry, the highest of priority targets, the highest and most dangerous enemy, and has the most appropriate name, the Apex. Apart from the Proteans and the Sludges, these are the only other enemies you cannot take down using your blade. Even if you stun them, even if you surprise them, even if you paralyze them, you cannot take them down with your melee weapon because they have a pulse that you saw if you slow down a little bit the video when your drone goes nearby, it will just knock you back, damage you. So under no circumstances do not go in melee range with these guys, it's very dangerous. As far as I know, they don't have a weak spot. Head or body shots seem to deal the same damage. They teleport further behind to get better positioning and they have ranged attacks. And on top of all that, they summon two enemies at a time every 5 to 10 seconds. 
So you know the typical enemy stuff. As you can understand, they earn their name as they are the apex of the Archeans. They're very hard to deal with, but there are ways to deal with them more efficiently. C4 is not one of them because I have tried to throw C4. Yes, you can damage them from a distance while you hide because they will not see you and they will not start summoning. Only when they see you, if you shoot them, if you shoot the C4, you won't alert them. However, that's not the most efficient way for grenades and C4 as you will need to waste a lot of resources and on higher difficulties you can face 2 or 3 Apex per map. So there is the safe way and the more risky way to deal with them. The safe way is deal with every other single enemy in the area. The nest, the normal enemies, the tormentors, smashers, destroy all of them, leave the Apex for last. Make sure to scan all the enemies in the area and know the location of the Apex at all times. Try not to alert them because if you have to face the Apex, you have to face the Ness, you have to face other enemies, you will most likely have to either retreat or just fight to the death and probably will be your death. And some Apex can spawn Tormentors or other enemies, so you will have to deal with them and exploit their weakness which is stun or paralyze. You can stun them, you can paralyze them, so Catch them flat-footed without being able to act, throw a stun or paralysis grenade at them, start shooting, and in case you, they try to summon enemies, stun them once again to interrupt the summon and keep shooting until they're dead. If they're stunned or caught without being aware, I do believe they take a little more damage and I did find that the most efficient way to deal with them. Just catch them by surprise and use one or two stun or paralysis grenades. The second way is basically the same way but in case you face them while you have to face other enemies and nests and other things, you have one option, prioritize and stun lock the Apex. Do not let them retreat in long range. They will just hide behind the hordes of enemies they will spawn along with the nests and you will have no other choice to just fight to your death or retreat. So you will have to make the best of it, stun them before they try to summon enemies and shoot your non-silenced weapon as fast as you can and destroy them before you get overwhelmed. So before we close, let's mention some other type of enemies and variants. First thing first, the Elite variant. They're very easy to recognize because I don't know how they earn it. They have a big title on top of their head that says Elite variant. For example, Elite Spiker, Elite Grant, Elite Apex, Elite Tormentor, Elite Smasher. They basically have more hit points and that's it. The only difference that you need to be aware is that although you can take down every single elite up to Tormentor with your knife, you cannot take down with one shot the elite smasher. Although you can perform that action, you can stun them or paralyze them, it will not kill them with one shot, you need to perform it three times. So you either have to use three gadgets or three of the operator abilities that can stun lock them. If you're in a group, it's much easier to deal with. You can pincer attack, one of the operators will draw aggro, the other will keep shooting on the back and deal a lot of damage with an unsilenced weapon. In case the smasher turns around, you can do the same. Be careful because the elite smasher and all the elite variants operate the exact same way as their counterparts, so the elite smasher can charge you. So in case it does that, just get out of the way. Don't go for the takedown, just keep shooting on the back. A two operators shooting on the back deal much more damage compared to going for a takedown. And if you face an elite apex, just good luck. In case it's one versus one, it just takes more shots. But sometimes when you are an elite hunt, they won't come alone. They will always bring a couple of more enemies. Even if you have killed all the enemies in the area, just make sure to kill everything. And if you, for example, face an elite apex with a couple of tormentors, you have to go for the apex and ignore the tormentors. Otherwise, you will get overwhelmed by the summons and use all the operator gadgets that you can to kill them as soon as possible. The last thing you need to be aware, elite hunts on higher difficulties have a very high chance to spawn proteans instead of the elite counterparts of normal enemies and proteans are very unique enemies and more dangerous than the apex in certain situations. Although they don't summon, they have operator abilities and they deal much more damage, but they deserve a video of their own. It's three of them that we have at the moment because there are three variations and I will make as I told you a separate video as soon as I can. And that was it for the bestiary of Rainbow Six Extraction. 
Thank you very much for taking the time to watch my video and an extra thank you in case you stick around until the end, so feel free to stay tuned for more upcoming videos for Rainbow Six Extraction and other video games. And as always, I wish you all a wonderful day.